let's go and work on something really easy with a binomial. So this would be question number two. And let's do something simple. So if I had x squared minus 6x plus 5 divided by 8x minus 5. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, again, I would not do synthetic division because when we want to divide polynomials, what the best thing we want to do is always look to see if we can factor things. Always look to see if we can break things down. And hopefully you recognize here, this quadratic trinomial immediately is like a ding, ding, ding. Is this factorable? What two numbers multiply to give me a positive five add to give me a negative six. And immediately I can see this is going to be a X minus five times an X minus one divided by a X minus five. Now, again, using the division property, since my two factors up here are separated or they are factors, since they're separated by multiplication, I can divide across them. So I'm just going to put parentheses around my divisor so you can see that these are the exact same expression so I can divide it. It's just like if I had a 3x over 3, right? The 3s will divide out. Just be careful though, ladies and gentlemen, again, quick little mistake. If this was like a x plus 3 over 3, you cannot divide out your terms. This does not equal an x, okay? You cannot do that, all right? Because it's separated by multiplication or addition. You have to have your term separated by multiplication to be able to apply the division property. That's just very, very important. But that's why factoring is important, right? You can see these are separated by subtraction and addition. I can't divide out my terms. I can't divide out the x's or divide out the fives. I have to factor it so it's a product. Now I can apply the division property. Little side point. Let's get into the long division. So long division is going to be a little bit different though if I'm going to be using a binomial rather than what we did up top was a monomial. So again, you're going to take your divisor and then in, put your dividend in the under the long division bar. All right. Now we have a little bit of a variation. Now we know the answer, right? We could divide this really easily, but let's go through the process here because students are usually okay with long division when it's a monomial, but it's this divisor part that gets us confused. So a couple points, make sure you always have your divisor and your dividend in descending order. That means you have the highest power first going down in descending order. And you can see I have X to the first, then my constant x squared, x to the first, and then my constant. So we're good to go. So when I am doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to divide the first term of my divisor. How many times does x go into x squared? Again, if it's like confusing to you, just write it out over here. How many times does x go into x squared? Oh, that's going to be x times. Now I multiply the x times both terms, right? Since I have two terms here, I got to take my first term, my quotient, multiply it by both terms. So x times x is an x squared. That's exactly the same, just like in the previous example. That's what I want. And x times a negative 5, which is going to be a negative 5x. Again, we're going to put parentheses around here. Now, in this case, I'm not going to put a plus 0, plus 0 and subtract it. I'm just going to bring down the 5, okay? It just is a lot easier. So we're going to subtract our rows. x squared minus x squared is a 0x squared, but we don't need to write it, right? Just leave it off. Negative 6x minus a negative 5. Again, that's a double negative, so that's why it's positive. If you don't put this negative here in parentheses, you're going to get this wrong, and that's the most common mistake students make. So spend the extra time, write the parentheses, and make sure you're subtracting your rows, right? It's not negative 11x. It's negative 6 minus a negative 5. That's positive, so that's a negative x, and then we have our plus 5 over here. How many times does x divide into a negative x? I don't know. That's kind of confusing. Write it on over here. How many times does negative x divide into a negative? How many times does x divide into a negative x? That's going to be a negative one time. Now, again, take your quotient, multiply it by both terms. Negative one times x is a negative x. Negative one times negative five is going to be a positive five. Ladies and gentlemen, when we go ahead and subtract those, zero, zero, that is your remainder. We don't need to write anything out. And that is going to be your quotient. And you can see that's exactly what we had over here, which I don't know why I didn't write that in there. X minus one, right? So divide it out, you get a good. Over here, we get a good. So that is the simplistic understanding and examples of long division. Now let's go and do one that's a little bit more fun.